Welcome, everyone. This is Adam Coleman, and with me today, we have Angela Zangarola, who is a certified divorce financial analyst and the founder of Quantum Wealth Strategies in Rochester, Michigan. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit more about her CDFA designation and all things divorce financial planning. So, Angela, thanks for being here. Thank you, Adam. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, before we begin, tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of what made you decide to go into financial planning in general, and then also specifically divorce financial planning. Sure. Yeah. So my story is not your traditional order of which in the manner of which things are done in the CDFA or divorce financial planning world. But I have always been in my past career, an educator first. So I was training financial advisors, so if financial services industry still, training financial advisors, very complex products. And I soon noticed that I had the ability to break down material and concepts that are fairly difficult to understand. And I was breaking it down even for their clients. So I noticed early on, even then, that I had a gift for explaining in a manner which could be understood because the reality of it is, is that if you're an engineer, you're going to probably want a different explanation than if you are an artist, right? And so I knew early on that I really had a gift for that. So what had happened in that time is transitionary period in my life. And I had experienced divorce at that time. And prior to that, I was a stay-at-home mom for about six or seven years. So I had the financial services background, educating financial advisors, stayed home, and then went through the process of my divorce. It was at that time that I realized how utterly complicated the financial aspect was. So here I was in the middle of something that I understood the language, right? I mean, it was familiar territory for me. I was in the business of it, and it still didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And then there was the emotional factor of that involved for me that made it just even worse. So when you have the emotional impact, you have, I call it the fog, you have a lot of noise. And what I mean by noise is, and, and, and I think people that go through divorce can all attest to this, is the opinions and feedback of family members and people that are not professionals or not going to be a neutral or give an objective point of view. And so fast forward, I would say maybe a year after the divorce was final, everything's calming down or so what I thought was decompressing and imagine walking to the mailbox and getting a manila envelope about that thick from the IRS and opening it up and realizing that, oh my gosh, I was on the tax return that was filed before I was getting a divorce. And that just opened up a whole can of worms of questions. And the long and short of it was this. I realized at that point that, well, oh my gosh, when I was reading through my settlement, and mind you, this was three mediations later, almost went to trial, that well, what else could be wrong? And first call was my to my attorney, right? And you know, I said, oh my gosh, am, am I going to be liable? Am I going to be responsible? And oh no, there's innocent spouse rule just in case. And the long and short of it is, is it worked out. Everything was fine. But the fact that I could not sleep at night, not knowing where my liquid assets would be going because federal law trumps state law. So you can put in there in the paperwork, anything to do with I'm not liable, et cetera, et cetera. But after you can go back and then, you know, sue on whose time and whose dime, right? And so that's what opened up for me the realization of what else is there. And so that was when I called the Institute for Divorce Financial Analysts and I asked them, can I get the material? And it wasn't for me to get the designation, which is like for exams and we have to have all these continuing ad. And at that point, I realized flipping through and taking the exams that I was about 90% textbook of everything you probably shouldn't have done, right, through the divorce. So that really was an eye opener for me. And then I had started the divorce consulting business and realized even more so that in order to service and provide the best service for my clients, I did have to pursue 
financial advisory role, which I did. It's been almost a decade and I feel very passionate about it because it's a very underserved area. I don't think a lot of folks really know that there are these divorce professionals such as yourself, myself, and even legal processes that are in place right now that they just aren't aware of. And so I think the awareness, and I'm so happy that you're doing these podcasts, Adam, and I'm so happy that you asked me because the awareness, getting it out there, I think is paramount. I did not, at least I didn't explore enough to know or even realize that there was such a thing. And it's paramount and can be very impactful on what your future looks like. So I realized that throughout the process, I feel very passionately about it because it's very emotional. Any transition in life that could be negatively impacting you, but any emotion that is drawn into a situation where you have to make a decision on finances, whether it's the loss of a spouse or a family member, and you have to make financial decisions that are pretty quick, you can make some mistakes. So it's very important to have these neutral, objective, black and white professionals that can assist through this process because it's highly, highly emotional. So I am a financial advisor. I do comprehensive financial planning with Quantum Wealth Strategies, and I'm very passionate about providing clients with a life purpose driven plan by customizing solutions that cater to them in achieving their goals. And part of this is any transition like such as divorce. I've had a number of CDFAs on the, the show previously, and there's a few different iterations of that. So sometimes you have the strict CDFA, they don't mm -hmm. do wealth management, they strictly do the division of assets. And then you have sometimes a hybrid model where it's like, sometimes they do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. And then others where it's like, they don't really do a lot of the CDFA work. It's really more wealth management. And then maybe they help a client that happens to be going through a divorce. Where does yours fit in? It sounds like you're more of the hybrid model where you do some specific CDFA work. And then also you have the wealth management side of things as well, correct? Yes. So I opened up my own registered investment advisory firm, Quantum Wealth Strategies in Michigan a few years ago. And that was strictly because my vision, my investment philosophy, and the way that my process with clients is very educational and informative. It's not all about just investment management, fund management. There's a lot of behavioral things that come up. And I'm very, very much in line with a comprehensive, meaning the full spectrum of all financial planning, meaning whether it's insurance, long-term care planning, disability, all of that so estate planning. These are very important parts of the financial picture. It's not just investment management. So I am a fiduciary as a registered investment advisor who happens to specialize in divorce financial planning. So to answer your question, yes, my firm is more of that hybrid model. I do quite a bit of the divorce financial planning, whether it just be representing one client and even more recently acting as a financial neutral in the collaborative process, which is a totally separate process where you're working with both of the clients. And we'll speak to the different types of divorce here in a little bit. So maybe get a little bit more of your opinion on those. But so you're able to help, even if it's not your client necessarily on the wealth management side, you're still able to step in, work with the divorce attorneys, do the division of assets as a CDFA, even if they don't need or want wealth management advice afterwards, correct? That is correct. Yes. And it's important to note that we are held to a standard as well as certified divorce financial analysts. Ethically, think of it as two hats. So I cannot act in the capacity of a financial advisor, an investment advisor. Let's say I had a client that has accounts with me and they are now all of a sudden going through a divorce. I cannot ethically, I can wear one hat at a time. So in other words, if they were a divorce financial planning client first, then that case is closed and then they became a financial planning client, that's okay. But you shouldn't be doing it simultaneously. It's just a conflict of interest. So, right. but yeah, I can act in both capacities. And it's also different because there are, I would say three parts to when a client contacts me in the beginning, in the middle, and at the very end. So these three areas in which the client would come to a CDFA are going to play different roles in the process of divorce. 
So it just depends on when they come to me. Ideally, the best time to come would be in the very beginning. As you know, Adam, I mean, I'm sure you deal with it. Sometimes you're like, oh my gosh, you know, or they, they give you the settlement and it's signed and it's like, ooh, not a lot we can do here, you know? That happens far too frequently, yes, unfortunately. So, sadly. You know, the, the earlier we can get involved and you and all the other parties, the specialists involved, the yep. better it is. And it's just the smoother we can make the process all around. Right. So. And you spoke to a lot of the differences there, but I guess first step for people, I guess one good thing that people do is obviously get a financial advisor involved, but then they think that that's kind of the end step. It's like, all right, we've done what we need to do. At least we're getting a financial advisor involved in the divorce, but maybe speak a little bit to the differences between just a traditional financial advisor and an actual certified divorce financial analyst and the work that you're doing that's different. Sure. So I would say or equate it to a financial advisor is a more comprehensive, like I'd mentioned, there are different areas of the financial planning process. The certified divorce financial analyst is, it. let's just say, narrows in to a specialty that we are specifically trained to ask questions, to do the analysis for clients, for equitable, it, in the state of Michigan, by the way, a CDFA throughout the country, you could be a community state or an equitable state. It's wise that clients know which kind of state in the guidelines that they're in. Um, but that being said, the certified divorce financial analyst is specifically trained to look for and to ask questions regarding not only just the financial picture now, but the impact on the future. So I'm very, very specific about this is not just for your present moment, but this is also looking at 5, 10, 20 years from now. And what the financial decisions that the client makes now, how are they going to impact their future? So I would say that it's kind of like if you go to a family doctor for an ongoing knee problem, you probably should have been seeing an orthopedic, right? Right. So again, and it just proves the point that I was in the financial services industry and how much I didn't know regarding the specifics of divorce financial planning and the impact, you know, obviously that it had on me afterwards. So yeah, absolutely. And that's the analogy that I typically use. It's like you've got the generalist and you've got the specialist. And mm -hmm. in a situation like a divorce, you really don't want to deal with just a generalist. Mm -hmm. uh, and luckily, in this case, you're not paying more for a specialist than you would for a generalist in almost all cases. So you might as well get right. the specialized advice for the same cost or cheaper at the end of Correct. the day. So, so right. I guess, what advice would you give for somebody starting down that path? Like, who should they be talking to? What are the hmm. considerations that they should be considering? You know, should they go to an attorney first? Should they think about other things or other parties to go to first? Yeah, that's a great question. So I would say I'm really not an advocate of the DIY process. I would say the first step for anyone is getting well-informed. Well-informed for what, right? Well, first of all, your situation, what kind of situation are you in, right? Are there children involved? Are there not? What is your major concern? Is it finances? Is it the asset division? Who's going to keep the house? Are there any major issues. Okay. Because I think at that point, once that's determined, it will determine the process in which clients decide to pursue. Okay. And an example of that would be, let's say that it's highly volatile. I don't know that a mediative process where they just hire a mediator, they kind of go through it amongst themselves. I don't think that's going to work. And also in situations where there is one party that is more dominant than the other. I had a case where the other party was an attorney, okay? And she was not. Now, he he wasn't a family law attorney, but still knew a lot of the law. So had a major advantage in that, in that situation, in that case. So I would say because there are different ways and methods of getting divorced today that people don't even realize, mediative, there's collaborative, and then there's litigative, unfortunately, which can be very expensive and costly, you know, a lot of back and forth. But I think the first thing that folks need to realize is, is it they have to determine and assess their situation. I had clients where a husband really wanted to do collaborative. 
Wife did not. She hired a litigative attorney. At that point, you're not going to go collaborative. It's probably very unlikely that you will <laughs> because you're not in agreement to that process, which you both have to be in agreement and that the attorneys both have to be in a collaborative field. So I would say folks need to really get out there and research what are the major issues so that they can then determine which process is going to work best for them. Because I would say litigative is probably not the best process for the majority of the divorce cases out there, but folks just don't know that there are other ways to go about it. So that's why I'm so happy that you're doing this because it's just getting the awareness out there that there are different ways and other ways. Yeah. And we've spoke at lengths about the different types of divorce, but maybe speak a little bit quickly to, obviously we, we know, I think everybody understands litigation. That's the go-to in their mind of what they think of. Mediation is fairly common. We've spoke about collaborative, but maybe speak to that a little bit more about kind of where your role would fit into collaborative and where that's a good fit for a lot of people as well. Sure. So when folks decide to go the collaborative route, it's a team of professionals that are collaboratively trained. Each client has their own attorney representing them. So it's not like you still don't have your own legal representation. You do. However, collaborative divorce is more advantageous in certain situations for folks because it's negotiated mutually. It's very transparent, very open, meaning uh, you have to come forth with all the information that is asked. Both parties are involved with that, the information, the decisions that are made. Sometimes the decisions, even in collaborative, don't have to be like this math 50-50 right down the line because we create shared solutions in acknowledging the client's highest priority. So sometimes that might not have a lot to do with money. And so there are different professionals involved in the collaborative process. There are financial folks like yourself, a CDLP, a CDFA, acting as a financial neutral. All right. So being completely objective with the black and white. There's the collaborative attorneys representing each party. There are highly important for folks that have parenting issues or don't know how they're going to navigate around parenting the children after. There are parenting, co-parenting specialists, facilitators, people that are specifically trained therapists like that. Divorce coach, I think is a huge one too. A lot of folks don't realize that your attorney is not your therapist and I can't tell you how many folks don't understand that they can't be calling their attorney for every single situation that's emotionally driven because the reality of the fact is they're going to bill you those hours. And I've seen people pay through the nose for that. Right. So I would say collaborative is everybody's trying to do the best that they can, given what the client's priorities are, emphasizing the needs of the children. If there are children involved, it keeps things out of the courtroom. It's more private. And I would say it works in depending on your situation. Definitely. And one thing I do want to make sure, and, and I don't know if I've done a very good job of this in the previous times, is you don't have to go collaborative to have those other team members. It's a very organized structure. If you go through the collaborative mm -hmm. process where it's almost like you're walking into a team of professionals that is laid out for you in a lot of cases mm -hmm. where you have your financial neutral, you've got your divorce coaches, co-parenting counselors, you know, different things are already kind of set up in that group, but you can go mediation, you can go litigation, you can go any type of divorce and still have those other ancillary members of the divorce team that can come in and help the process along the way. You've got yourself, you can be involved regardless. It doesn't have to be collaborative, obviously. You, you can have divorce coaches. And again, I highly advise having that as well every single time to have the emotional piece, that pillar filled. You've got the financial side, you've got the emotional side. And then obviously everybody knows the legal side. That's all, that's always covered. But you can have those members regardless of that's the right. type of divorce you go through. So Collaborative is obviously a great one. Mediation or an amicable situation or cooperative divorce is another one where you can have other team members involved and it doesn't have to go the litigation around. So there's other options to go through. Any other team members that you've run across that have been vital to the process beyond the ones that we've discussed so far? 
No, I would say those are the primary folks that are involved or professionals that would be involved. Like I said, attorneys or mediator, depending on which way you want to go. I would say for folks that have children, I would say hugely paramount if there's going to be any conflict in parenting time. And I see this after the fact a lot too, where things are, oh, we'll take care of the summer schedule later. A co-parenting specialist, I think is so critical in helping folks out. Like I said, a divorce coach can probably save you, a therapist, some money because you're not constantly going to your attorney addressing your emotional needs. And then, like I said, the financial is a huge, Adam, I mean, the house is sometimes the biggest or maybe even only asset for the client. And that can be so costly in the end if it's not addressed during or before the settlement is written up and signed. Absolutely. Well, this has been super helpful advice. I'm hoping a lot of people <laughs> take it and mm, learn more and right. get more people involved in the process and don't just rely on attorneys. Obviously, they're vital, but there's other people that can make this process a lot easier and smoother for people Absolutely. Uh, all across the board. So, well, if anybody would like to learn more about you and get more information on you, and I guess before we go through that, you're obviously in Michigan. Mm -hmm. Are there other states you're able to help with, or is it mostly specific to Michigan that you're able to do the CDFA work and the financial advisory work for? Yeah, so I can do work anywhere across the United States. I predominantly service people in Michigan. Again, if it was someone out of state, the guidelines, we have to be very careful because of the guidelines. If you're a community or equitable state, which I mentioned before, we would have to know that as a CDFA, but pretty much on a national level, we can help folks out. And you folks can reach me by calling 248 396 2593. Visit my website, quantumwealthstrategies.com. I am on Facebook, Divorce and Finances, LinkedIn. There's definitely ways to find just Google Quantum Wealth Strategies. I'll make sure to include all the links to the various sites in the description. So please click those, check them out, get people involved for sure. Exactly like Angela said, definitely have a financial expert involved that specializes in divorce. If you're going through this process, it can make the process so much easier. But Angela, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. The pleasure was mine. Thanks, Adam. Thank you.